Hi, welcome back to the breadboard and part two of the first mailbag of 2017. In the first part, we looked at all the goodies that were kindly sent to me from RS Components and many of the vendors that sell through RS Components. In this video, we're going to have a look at what I've been sent um, over the last little bit from a number of other vendors from all over the world, including um, Taiwan and China and things like that. So a lot of these vendors sell through eBay or AliExpress or um, Banggood and things like that. So um, I will provide links to them. They may be direct, uh, but um, either way, you'll see how much they, I'll try and tell you how much they are currently on their website. When you watch this, the prices may differ. And of course, different countries uh, will have different exchange rates and various other things. So. Uh, this is just going to be based on either US dollars or Canadian dollars or something like that. I'll try and make it clear as we go, or at least I'll post it up and give you the link so that you can look for yourself. So here's the pile. It's not as big as the Irish Components ones, but I think you'll find a lot of the items in here are going to be relatively interesting for a number of different reasons. So let's just take this small one first. Now this one has been sent to me from a friend of mine on my Element 14 forums. Um, he works out of the United States, is a good engineer. I interact with him quite a bit and he's actually just tried to um, start testing some new approaches to probing um, circuits and things. So what he did was, and this is through the Element 14 forums, is he designed some probe tips. He actually has access to a lot of dental equipment. He actually decided to try out something for electronics using some bits from dentistry. So there's a little Allen key he provided me to help me with this. But what he sent me is a pair of probes right here. I don't know if you can see that. I will do a separate review of these on a video um, to go through them. But these are basically um, titanium. I'll see if I can get some pictures of the actual ends and insert it into the video, use a macro lens or something. Um, but they're add-ons for a multimeter um, you put your probes in the end, use some Allen keys to screw it in. And these are uh, basically titanium drill bits that uh, use this probe. John thought that it would be a good idea to try using some of these um, burrs um, to, because they have extremely sharp titanium edges on. They would be very easy to cut through conformal coating and things like that and make contact with the electronic circuitry underneath. Um, a lot of probes that you get with multimeters and things like that do not have very sharp or very good points and they wear out fairly, fairly quickly. By using a titanium bit like this, it should last a long, long time and give you some very reliable um, connections to the underlying circuitry, even if you're poking it through um, some you know, sprayed on conformal coating and things like that. If you're measuring voltages, obviously even if these are a few ohms each and they're internal resistance, it wouldn't make any difference because your, you know, your 10 mega ohm input impedance of a typical multimeter uh, it becomes insignificant. Anyway, thanks you very much John. I look forward to playing with these and um, I will be putting a video out there soon to show you how well they're working. Next up, let's have a look here. So what I have here is a couple of displays from a company again in Australia called 4D Systems. Now I've shown you um, displays in the past from Nextian, from IT Studio, even the ones I just showed you in the video, which was the Nextian displays, where you can use a programmable IDE and set up your displays and things like that. The Nextian displays that I've shown you are uh, serial connected displays. They have a microcontroller on board and you use a design tool to create a, a screen layout and then you can talk to them serially to send data or to read interactions with the I.O. and things like that. And they work very, very well and they're very cost effective. Um, the 4D Systems ones are effectively taking that display technology to the next level. Um, I have two displays here. One is 4.3 inch and the other one is 3.2 inch. This is the 3.2 inch I'm holding right now. Um, come in a very nice box. When you open it up, um, you've got a 4D Systems little leaflet. They come with an interface card 
which allows you to communicate with the board and also expands some of the I.O. You see here that there's a little, um, like a ribbon cable, very similar to what you see in a Raspberry Pi for a camera or for the LCD display. Um, let me see if I can open this up and show you a little easier because if it's out of the case. There's also an SD card there. It's a four gigabyte industrial industrial grade uh, SD card. So what this is, this is an adapter that allows you to connect via USB. Um, and on this side, you connect it to the um, 40 systems display. And it also, the 40 systems display, they actually have some I.O. on them, which can you can actually solder some headers on here. And you can see you've got transmit, receive, uh, basically 15 GPIO lines available that can also be used for um, controlling relays or sensing um, some buttons or things like that. And it also has an audio output on here as well. Um, now, one of the things with the Nextian displays is that they weren't too good um, or weren't capable of showing you um, full uh, multimedia um, videos or anything like that. I believe these... 4D systems displays are capable of doing that. Now, whilst you may not be able to get the uh, multimedia to stream through the um, serial interface, um, you can actually put them onto an SD card and actually call them up if you need to. So this is the, as I said, this is the 3.2 inch display. So you can see really nice touch screen. Uh, I think it's resistive touch. Um, this one is designed for back mounting onto a um, some kind of um, case or chassis or something like that. And on the back of here, you can see full, um, fully enclosed circuit board, except for a small amount. Um, a small mounting here so that you can put an SD card in um, that the board can read and react to your, your processor. Um, you've got a, um, that's the connection for the LCD display, so they put a bit of tape over it. Uh, and then this is the connection for your expansion module that takes it out to um, so these small adapters that I just showed you um, that allows you to communicate with it. Now, obviously, um, if you're using serial connections, then you would use a different adapter. And SD Systems has sent me one of those as well. So here's the ribbon cable that would go to that adapter that I just showed you that came, came in the case. Very nicely packaged. Um, you've also got a standard... Um, serial adapter, so you've got the TTL serial lines, um, plus 5 volts, transmit, receive, ground, and a reset. And then a header that allows you to use that um, flat cable to go out to the LCD display. And then they also provide, along with that, these are all part of the basic kit. Um, this is the um, basically the serial cable that allows you to jumper from here to whatever else you're going to be plugging into it. Now, so that's the display. Now, what they've also sent me, this is the 3.2 inch, is they've sent me a um, Arduino shield adapter. So what this is, is a board, because remember I said these things communicate via a serial TTL connection. So what this is, is an Arduino compatible header shield that you can just plug over your Arduino and then using one of the cables, like I just showed you, here's one that comes with this as well, you can just plug it into here and plug it straight into the display and that will then drop straight onto your Arduino and away you go. So very nice and easy to interface. And they, they, these Arduino adapters are available separately to the display, so if you don't need it, you don't need to buy it. And by the look of this, you can actually plug in two displays onto one um, board. So one of them would use the obviously built-in UART and the other one probably will use the uh, a software serial or something like that to communicate with the board. A um, bunch of configuration jumpers. We'll have to look at those when we go through the technical sheet for this. Um, but that's the Arduino adapter for the board, which is really nice. Now, as I said, these are very similar in the way they operate to the Nextian. So there is a graphical design tool that allows you to lay out the board and everything else, but the communications, it's much, much more um, mature product in the way that it works. The, uh, the fact that the processor on here can um, actually play 
multimedia videos and things like that, animated GIFs, etc. Um, it comes at a price though. These are more expensive than the Nexians, but I think if you need those capabilities and you want to take something to the next level, then these are definitely um, worth having a look at. As I said, they're an Australian company and I'll provide the links and we will be doing a review of these on their own and then what I think I will do is that now that I have a number of different displays both from Nextian, from um, Panel Pilot with the Ace um, from Lascar as well as the um, 4D Systems ones um, we maybe do a little bit of a comparison between all of them to see what the features are and capabilities and things like that and maybe do a side-by-side -side, for want of a better word performance comparison. So here is a uh, another display this one is the bigger 4.3 inch display much more usable for you know if you're using it for industrial control applications beyond say just a thermostat. So this the display area is here but the difference with this display that they sent me the other one you would mount from behind something this one is designed for surface mounting and so it has a glass, um, I think it may be Gorilla Glass or something like that, panel on the front that's bonded to the display so that you would actually insert this from the front um, onto a case or something like that. Again, it's got a protective screen across the display here for the moment. On the back, it looks very similar in many ways to the display we just looked at. You've got the ribbon cable going to the LCD display, you've got your touch connection here, you've got your data cable that would go to the um, TTL serial adapter or to the USB adapter and you've got your SD card slot for a micro SD card and then you've got your processors on board as well and as I said this one is designed for surface mounting from the outside and what they've done to help with that is they provided some uh, it's surrounded with 3M adhesive so once you're ready to mount it in your box you will just take the tape off and push it onto the front of the case and that will be it mounted. Um, on the back side though, obviously with a bigger display, they've got a bigger um, plastic molding protecting the LCD, providing some additional rigidity and things like that. So these are both, as I said, from 4D Systems out of Australia. So depending on what your needs are, um, a great board to look at. And we will be doing a review, as I said, in the very near future on this. And then they sent me a second Arduino adapter so that I can try these on two separate Arduinos. Um, I will try and run them both off of one as well to see how well that works. Um, so that's it from 4D Systems, a couple of um, HMI displays, which would be really great for some projects. And as I say, I've got lots of displays so we can do some comparisons and things like that. Next up. So next up, we have a, another couple of displays. Now I apologize, these are out of the case. I was playing around with them over the Christmas vacation. These are from a company called Lumix. They had sent me an OLED display earlier and it had some preliminary software on. So they've sent me an updated one. Um, this is a single color OLED display. Basically it's a dot matrix display that you can actually fully control whatever goes on the display. It does have a microcontroller on board and it does have GPIO and things like that as well. I will provide a link to all of the um, specifications for it but this this too has things like data outputs, um, GPIO inputs and outputs. Uh, you communicate with um, 5 volt TTL serial again so quite happy to talk with a um, an Arduino or through level shifters to a Raspberry Pi and things like that and we're going to do some demonstrations. I think you've already seen me using these in some of my demonstrations um, with the IoT 2020 and things like that. The second board that Lumix has sent me which is really cool is this one. This is basically uh, a very similar resolution to the small OLED display but this one is completely LED. Um, hundreds of LEDs all on this board. There's actually four boards here. They're um, eight wide or eight down and then I think 92 across or something like that and there's four of them and when you turn it around and look at the back of it um, you can see it's four distinct boards there's a bit of a v-groove cut here that allows you to break them apart if you wanted to um, they have I2C communications leads coming out from each board and they communicate to the controller which is here um, you've got supply in you can either provide it via the um, USB connection or via these two clip connections and then you also have 
uh, TTL serial, again, same as the other board, to connect it to Raspberry Pi or to a Arduino Uno or something like that. Um, this one doesn't have the I.O. on um, that the other one does, but from a display perspective, it is a very nice board that allows you, without too much current or you know consumption, to put up a nice, decent-sized display. We will do a separate review on these and um, how-to on them as well. Uh, in this case, you don't need to use a design tool, which is what distinguishes these boards from the um, 4D systems, from the Nextians, um, from the Panel Pilot Ace and things like that. They all need a custom design tool to be able to lay out the screens and then you just pass data or read data to and from the displays in order to find out what's happening. Um, on these displays, you don't do that. All you do is you send bitmaps um, and or text instructions and things like that. So you're using it much more like a regular display. Um, whether it be a you know, one of these 64 by 128 OLED displays or uh, many of the other ones where it's just a graphical display. So they're very easy to use. They have a um, serial communication standard where you send a command to it, you wait for a response to say that it's done, you can send another command, etc, etc. Very easy to interface to an Arduino Uno or a Raspberry Pi or any other controller with a TTL serial display um, 5 volt. Um, anyway, so that's the Lumix LED um, and OLED matrix displays that have arrived in the mailbag. Let's go on to the next. Okay, we have a package here from XTAR, which sells on a number of different channels. You can also go straight to their site. And what we have here is an intelligent USB charger. Um, I've seen a few of these around on the internet um, from various places. Most of them only have five USB output ports on them. This one actually has six outputs. And what, as you can see on this one, is 100 to 240 volts. So, you know, basically worldwide from a power supply perspective. And you can have a maximum of two and a half or 2.4, sorry, amps on each port. Um, the, so the specifications, each port with smartphone, tablets, e-cigarettes, electronic watches, USB battery chargers, uh, Bluetooth headsets, etc. work like your original wall adapter. Um, intelligent ports detect your device and choose the fastest possible charge time, um, up to 2.4 amps per port. So I'm not sure whether it's 5 volts at 9 amps or whether it's truly 2.5 amps times 6. And obviously 2.5 times 6 is going to be um, 12, 13, 14, 15 amps or something, not 9. So it could be up to 2.5 amps per port, but restricted um, to a maximum of maybe 9 amps total. Now, usually all your devices are not going to require 9 amps, you know, um, or 2.5 amps to charge them. So that's the unit, really nice um, looking unit. So you've got your standard power connection. Obviously, it's going to be double insulated probably, but yes, it is. There's the symbols right here. So CE certified, double insulated, um, made in China, Shenzhen, XTAR, X-T-A-R, not X-STAR, but X-TAR, Electronics Co. Limited, uh, 45 watts is what it can dissipate. So at 5 volts, that's a little under um, times 6. So if you take that, divide it by that, it's going to be 10 watts, so 5 volts. Yeah, it's close to 2 amps per. Um, you could... You know, we will we'll test this anyway as best we can, but it's not a hub. Remember that. It's just a USB charger. Now, one of the uses I can see for this is I do a lot of projects where I have um, some Arduino Unos, I have some Raspberry Pis and other things all going at the same time. And it's always a pain in the butt to have so many um, USB adapters plugged into a wall socket or many wall sockets. Uh, when they're all sitting next to each other and you really just want to have a single supply driving all of them. So this, you come to the cable for North America in my case, um, is ideal for, you know, not just charging devices, but also for um, powering things like Arduino Unos and things like that. So that's an XSTAR um, 6U USB charger. So very handy for those that have a lot of USB devices and they don't want to be having, you know, six wall warts plugged in, which is not a very efficient way of doing things. 
So that's the X-Star Intelligent USB Charger. Thank you, Mandy, from X-Star for that. And I'll let you know when the video is done. Um, okay. Next up is a package from IT Studio. Now, I've shown you many, many things from IT Studio before. And I am always, um, you know, whenever I go to do uh, Node Red and Raspberry Pi, um, IoT videos and demonstrations and things, I will often show you a Sonoff uh, module being used as one of the edge devices. They're all based on ESP8266s and they will um, easily lend themselves to integrating into a home automation, office automation or other um, control situation where you want to turn off uh, loads up to 10 or more amps. The original Sonoffs could handle 10 amps and now I have a new package of devices here from them that include um, increased capabilities. So I've already got one of them out of the case um, here, which is a Sonoff TH-16. And what this is, is it's like the original Sonoffs, but it's 16 amp. Um, so, you know, one of the things I, when I was talking to the folks at, at IT Studio about the Sonoffs was in the UK, when you're running 240 volts, having a 10 amp switch is great because that gives you two and a half kilowatts. But the minute you bring it across to North America, you're kind of restricted down to now just a kilowatt instead of two and a half kilowatts. So they've come out and it, I mean, it may not be in direct response to me, but it's still nice to see. They've actually come out with a new unit, which is a 16 amp version. So it's got an upgraded relay. Um, some of the design aspects of this that, have, that they've rearranged, um, the original ones, the power came in one end and came out the other end. Now both connections are at the same end. Um, they've also provided a hole for plugging in a temperature sensor. So these have already got built in the capability of measuring temperature and they can provide either this one like this, which is basically like a DST22 temperature type sensor, uh, which will do humidity and temperature, or you can get one of the uh, 18B20 um, temperature probes, which is temperature only. It has a stainless steel, um, I have one around here somewhere. Uh, anyway, stainless steel uh, sleeve, I'll put a picture up in the video right now, um, that will just measure temperature only. And it's very simple to reconfigure it to use one or the other. Um, for now, I'm just going to show you the fact that I've got this sewn off here as the TH16 um, with the temperature sensor capability. I'll just put that one down. Um, also have a sewn off dual, which is um, very similar to the other sewn offs, again in the new format of um, case. But this one has two relays in it at uh, 10 amps each, as opposed to, so it's not a TH16, it's 10 amps. So if you've got situations where you may have two lights or two, uh, two independent loads uh, that you want to control, then the Sonoff Dual might be the one for you. Now remember, the one really cool thing about these Sonoffs is they're very, very inexpensive. Um, I think the TH16 is not much more than about um, $10 or something like that. The, uh, the Dual might be slightly higher. They also have one called a Power. Looks exactly the same as the other one, um, except that it is a 10 amp rating, uh, sorry, 16 amp rating. And it has the capability of measuring the power consumption of the load that you have. So when it switches the load off, obviously there's no power being consumed, so it will show you zero. But it will measure the volts, it will measure the current, and it will actually allow you to uh, monitor those via a web app or through uh, Node Red or something like that and uh, you know trend it and everything else so that's a really really cool addition to the Sonoff range um, I have one hooked up now when I do the video I will show you the kind of output um, I'll modify it to use the Arduino IDE based software so that I can keep it all local in my house because that's the way I prefer to do things so that's the Sonoff power um, the next one I have is the Sonoff touch now, one of the things that has been lacking in the Sonoff range, they've had all the capability of doing the switching, um, you know, with relays and things like that, but they haven't had the ability to um, actually initiate it from a separate unit. So what they have now is this device called the Sonoff Touch. This is specifically the one for North America, so it has the square um, socket that can go into a standard wall unit. 
Um, there's also a version, I've got it upside down here, there's also a version that will work for Europe which has a round back on it but they're basically fundamentally the same. Um, and what they have is they have a touch screen on the front, uh, sorry not a touch screen but a touch switch. There's LED to illuminate it, it's an ESP8266 still, so all you have to do is touch it and it can send a signal um, out to a remote system to say that it has been touched. So you could use it to initiate some kind of action through um, Node Red or whatever other control software you're using. But it can also control a locally a load. So you could take this and actually put it um, in replacement for a standard switch on the wall that you already have. You've got your uh, live in, your live negative in, and your live out. So there is a relay in here. It will only support up to two amps. Um, so that will be, you know, lights or something like that. But nevertheless, it's a complete integrated unit. Um, there's a bit of the inside because I've got the front off just temporarily. Um, I'm not going to take it apart any further right now, but I will show you later because I want to be able to reflash this as well. So that's the Sonoff Touch. Um, we're going to review all the Sonoff things together and fairly quickly. Um, already talked about that one before. The last unit that I have here right now from Sonoff, and they're bringing new things out all the time, so check out their site. Now this unit is actually a quad um, relay board that Sonoff was selling. Now since I've got this, um, both my friend Pete Scargle in the UK on tech.scargle.net, um, sorry, yes, um, and I, when we got these, we very quickly contact IT Studio and told them that they really should pull this from the shelves. And the reason for this is this is the mains version of this unit. It comes in um, a 5 volt version, um, a 24 volt version, I think, and a, and a mains version. This is the mains one. When we turn it over, you, I think without even telling you, you can probably tell me what's wrong with that and why it is so unsafe. Uh, and if you can't figure it out, have a look at this little area here and think about the clearances. This whole green area is a ground plane and there is probably a 0.1 of a millimeter gap between the ground plane that comes right across um, the whole surface here and the mains inputs to the, the power supply, um, which is this little mains power supply unit right here. Now, when we contacted IT Studio about these, they immediately pulled them off the shelves, all of these ones. Now, we also found out that they did not design these and they were uh, selling them from uh, another vendor through their site and they've actually now decided to um, create their own version of this because having a four channel one and everything else is a really cool idea um, but obviously they don't want to sell something that's not safe a lot of their newest products all the ones i just showed you um, up to now have all been ce certified and things there's no way that this would ever get ce certification because of those tracks and things um, so now they're going to design their own and hopefully they're going to be releasing it soon and i'll get one for review uh, but this one, just be aware, the reason I'm showing you this is not because I'm necessarily going to review it. I might modify it to just work off of 5 volts, um, but certainly as a mains unit, I would not recommend it. So be very aware when you're buying things. Um, check if you can. I always try to see when I'm looking on the website to see if they show a view of the back side of the board so that you can see what these clearances and things are on the tracks to see if it's actually meeting uh, code in your region. It may not be CE certified, but it still should at least... Um, be trying to meet the code of what you're doing. When we look at the other Sonoffs, I'll show you specifically what um, steps they take to make sure that their units do adhere to CE and local codes for things like clearance and creepage and stuff like that. This unit does not, so it's not going to be an official part of the Sonoff reviews. And again, as I said, they don't, um, IT Studio does not make this one, the specific one. So when they bring their own out, I will show you it. Anyway, that's all the pieces from Sonoff, which is really cool. I look forward to getting those all through um, review and um, hopefully getting more from Sonoff in the future as well. So let's now go on to the next item. Okay, this next one is from Texas Instruments, a very light box. I, know, I happen to know what's in here because they contacted me specially for um, sending it to me. So what this is, and it's going to be very interesting to be reviewing this, let me show you the picture here, hopefully it will focus, is a four and a half digit, 100 kilohertz, true RMS, 
wireless digital multimeter with Bluetooth for mobile IoT applications. And it's basically a proof of concept or um, prototype using a lot of the Texas Instruments um, components. Um, and they've made it into a long, thin, probe-like module. And what it has is a common terminal, NFC antenna connection, so it's got near-field communications, um, Captivate MCU programming connector, it's got an RF430 CL330H NFC transponder, a 2.4 gigahertz antenna, for the, probably for the Bluetooth, a CC2640 Bluetooth enabled MCU, um, and obviously the CC2640 JTAG connector, reset button, 3.7 volt AAA lithium ion battery. I have to try and get one of those before I can actually use this because I don't have one. Maybe I can hook it up to a, a bigger battery and just have some clips going to it for now. Uh, voltage range switch and a measurement mode switch, and then your uh, voltage current terminal. Um, built in power. Uh, analog front end, it's got an MSP430 FR2532 Captivate CPU, uh, micro USB connector, etc. So this can hook up to your computer and um, it's basically, you know, it's a, as I said, four and a half digit, 100 kilohertz true RMS wireless DMM. So it'll be very interesting to give this a run for its money. It's, um, there's not many of these gone out to people. I happen to be one of the lucky ones from Texas Instruments. So this would be part of a TI Tuesday kind of video. And here we go. So that's the unit. Um, very sweet. It's not in a box or anything, so it is a little bit flexible. As I say, it's an evaluation module um, for like proof of concepts to show you the kind of applications you could do with the set of Texas Instruments chips. Um, so very nicely made. As I said, I'm going to have to get myself a um, AAA lithium ion 7 point, sorry, 3.7 volt battery to go in here um, or clip an external little battery on just to try it out. But um, I just got this over Christmas from Texas Instruments. I'm one of their MVPs on their site and a few of us have had the um, pleasure of being sent these to evaluate and play around with and, let, and show you guys what can be done with a combination of Texas Instruments um, chips and processors and things like that. So this should be very interesting to evaluate when the time comes. This one is from a company called TomTop. And I was, they actually um, emailed me uh, just before, a little way before Christmas asking if I wanted to review any of their products. And I had a look and there was not a huge amount from the industrial control side of things that interested me. But as some of you may have noticed, and I know some of you have commented, uh, when I'm doing screen capture and talking through my um, headset, uh, capturing the audio through to my computer, the audio quality kind of sucks a bit, to say the least. So um, what we decided upon for me to have a look at is something that will be um, hopefully very capable of improving my audio for when I'm screen capturing on the computer. So what this is, is there, uh, it's all in Chinese, so I can't read that. But it is, the, basically what I did was I went through their site and tried to find, um, you know, going through the site, the best microphone, because they have a whole bunch of audio and camera and uh, other pieces of equipment like this. And so I picked basically the best, what they, well, on their site, they call studio quality um, microphone so that I can add this to my computer um, for my video capture and um, improve the quality of all my audio. So I will do a separate video with this and we'll compare it to uh, the microphone I'm using right now which is a lapel mic um, on my camera and then I'll compare it to the two different headsets I have that I use. One is a Logitech um, sort of you'd usually use it with Skype and things like that. Um, and then my other, you know, I've got two different headsets that I use sometimes for recording. And then we'll try this and see what the difference is in quality. Like I said, this is a studio quality one. You can see it uses the industry standard connector for the uh, microphone at this end. Um, let me just put that back in here. Um, comes with a big fuzzy um, windbreak 
so that it can eliminate a lot of the pop noises and uh, wind noises and things. Um, it comes with a um, packet, it's a suspension unit which can uh, mount onto an arm to eliminate any uh, noises from your um, desk and things like that. So it's all um, suspended in a internal unit here, right? Uh, eliminate, as I said, all the noise from the bench, any tapping and things. Um, so your microphone would just clip right in here. And it has um, a, comes with a pop filter as well. So you would have this, you know, the standard thing in, in front of your microphone to stop the p -p -p kind of noises. And it also comes with um, a nice length of what looks like fairly good quality um, audio cable to plug in. And it comes with a uh, bench mount so that you can basically screw it to your desk and have it suspended from your desk so that you can have um, it you know, out of sight but just near where you're talking. Now, it's an analog one. It is not a USB um, microphone. Okay, so you know it's the my son actually has one that looks very much similar to this, but it has a USB connector on the end. This one is an analog one, so it should be a little different. It's still going to be relying on the PC for doing the audio capture. Anyway, that completes the uh, second half of the mailbag. I hope you enjoyed that and it's given you a bit of insight to a lot of the products that we're going to look at and integrate into some of the projects going forward. Um, a couple of other last things I want to mention is that um, I'm just starting off a uh, the new part of the uh, DC load with a friend of mine. Um, I'm, sure, I'm not sure where in the world he is right now. He travels around quite a bit sometimes. Um, where we're going to take the uh, DC load that we created last year and we're going to add some automation to it so that you can use things like LabVIEW to remotely control the DC load, make measurements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which would be quite interesting. He's, we've already got started um, putting together the design specs and things like that. Uh, includes using 16-bit ADCs and DACs, etc. And I'm also in the process now of just finishing off the hardware of a new CNC, and I wasn't going to record the hardware assembly because it's basically exactly the same as my previous CNC assembly, uh, except using shorter lengths of extrusion and things. And I will be recording the electronics to, um, assembly, especially now that I've got my crimping tool because you know a lot of people were asking why I wasn't using ferrules when I was going into terminal strips and things like that. So Irish Components have now provided a whole bunch of ferrules to me and as well as a nice crimping tool for crimping them on. So now I'm going to get started assembling the electronics for the smaller CNC so that we can do maybe some 3D printing, some PCB um, work and things like that with it. So stay tuned. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon with the next video.